Warzone has quickly become one of my favorite game modes to play, and I've picked up a few strats and helpful tips from my time playing, so if you're looking for specific tips, timestamps will be in the description below. In this video, I'm going to be going over some basic strats and tips you might not know to help improve your Warzone gameplay. I'll be going over loadouts and perks in a separate video so I can cover them more extensively. Also, if you have any tips I don't mention in this video, leave them in the comments below as well as any Warzone gameplay questions you might have. Let's get into the tips. Before you even start playing, you have to pick your landing spot and drop in. But how do you find a good spot to drop at? For me, a good landing spot consists of a few things. Good loot, the number of contracts, how close it is to a shop, how close it is to the circle, and the number of people that could land there. Going to places like these and getting kills earlier will help you get better starts in your Warzone games. Once you've picked your spot and landed, I recommend you look for a gun and a contract. But what kind of contract should you grab? Let's go over all the contracts and how they can help you get an edge. Personally, I go for a bounty first. By grabbing a bounty contract early and taking out your target before they even really have a chance to loot gives you a huge head start on money and on an opposing player that might be nearby. Even if you don't go hunt down your bounty target, you can get to see the general area of where they're at. This helps you keep tabs on people nearby, and gives you more time to think about how you want to approach a fight. The scavenger contract will create loot boxes and mark them on your map. These boxes will spawn one at a time with the next box spawning after one has been opened up. This has a maximum of three boxes. Each loot box will increase your chance to get more rare loot, as well as money and XP. Also, as of Season 4, it is guaranteed to drop an armor satchel or two in the last box. The recon contract will spawn a mini HQ basically somewhere near you for you to capture. Capturing will give you some loot and the location of the next circle on your map. But be careful, the second you start capturing it, a yellow flare will be sent up from your location alerting other players to where you're at. Also, if you run in a circle around it while you capture the point, it'll do nothing. But it's a fun way to help pass the time. And last but not least, the most wanted contract. This contract will put you on the map for all players to see for 3 minutes. Why pick this up? After time expires, you'll receive a measly cash bonus, but you'll respawn all your dead teammates. It's a high risk, high reward contract if you're low on money and down on teammates. But if you're nutty, you can pick this up and have the kills come to you. And I should mention that there are also contraband briefcases. When you pick them up, you'll get an extraction point on your map for you to bring the briefcase to to unlock a blueprint. But those are very uncommon and a little risky to go for, but the blueprint's pretty cool. While you're looting early in the game, be on the lookout for field upgrades. Field upgrades are another item that can give you an edge against your opponents. All the possible field upgrades are a munition box, recon drone, dead silence, stopping power rounds, trophy system, deployable cover, and an armor box. The munition box will refill your ammo for both the weapons you have equipped, as well as refilling your tactical and lethal ammo. To optimize these, coordinate with your team on what ammo you need most. For example, if someone on your squad is using a rocket launcher, having another teammate hold it while they use a munition box will give you more rockets you can drop for them later. Recon drones will give you a nice little overview of the area you fly it in. These are really good for getting intel on people in your area showing up with gray markers on them. You can mark these people with the drone for your team to see, but if you scan them with the drone, the player will be notified, so it's best just to ping the location they're in not to give yourself away. Also, you can have a teammate toss a C4 on it and wait for your signal to detonate it and get a cheeky kill. Dead Silence is my favorite field upgrade because of the many uses it can have. Dead Silence, as the name suggests, makes your footsteps quieter for a short time with a little added speed boost. This can be used to sneak up on unaware enemies or to make sneaky escapes without having to slowly crouch around to get away quietly. It's also great for when you need to outrun the gas. Stopping power rounds when used give you a full mag of stronger ammunition that deals extra damage. Be careful of prematurely reloading or switching the weapon with one on the ground because this will remove the stopping power rounds. These are best used for guns with fast fire speeds, early game low tier guns to make them viable, or when you're in a pinch and need some ammo to stay alive. The trophy system is a little tripod that destroys projectiles like nades and rockets if they're within its range. This works well for when you're pinned down or when you're fighting somebody who you know has some projectiles on them. But by far the best use for these is using them to buff vehicles. Placing this on any of the vehicles you find in Warzone makes using a car as a weapon way easier when you're not getting blown up every time you drive or fly. Deployable cover is kinda ass to be honest. It doesn't really have much of a use unless you're in desperate need of cover in an open field or have a dumbass spot you want to make even more head ass. One good thing I'll say about it is using it to mount to lessen your recoil on faraway targets is pretty neat. Armor boxes are exactly what you'd think they'd be. They refill all your reserve ammo slots. To maximize each use, drop the armor you have from your inventory before using it to give extra armor for your teammates or just to flex how much armor you have. Now that we've gone through the pickups you should be looking out for, let's go over what you should buy at the shop. As of Season 4, here are all the options you can purchase. Armor Plate Bundle for 1500 Gas Mask for 3000 Cluster Strike for 3000 Precision Air Strike for 3500 UAV for 4000 Self Revive Kit for 4500 Munition Box for 5000 Armor Box for 6000 And a Loadout Drop Marker for 10000 Also, you can redeploy a teammate for 4500 The items you should prioritize are the Armor Bundles, UAVs, Loadout Drop Markers, Self Revise if you have the cash, and a teammate redeploy if you need it. Here's why. Armor is the most obvious choice. Pick it up when you need it. 
Redeploys are also self-explanatory, buy back your trash teammates after they lose their gulag. UAVs are amazing, they show you the location of everyone that doesn't have ghosts on the map, but if you buy and activate three of them, you'll get advanced UAV and see the direction and movement of all enemy players that don't have ghosts. You can see ghost players, but they will show up like a normal UAV. Loadouts are key to getting more kills and improving your chance of winning. Getting to use weapons you're comfortable with and weapons that are just better than the ones you can pick up in general make it so much easier to win fights. Not to mention you will also activate whatever perks you have on your custom class. Grabbing loadouts also completely remove the need to loot for anything besides ammo and armor. Also, after the first wave, a loadout drop will spawn for every team. Pay attention to how many drop alongside yours. This will let you know how many teams are in your area. self revives are not necessary, but they can help in a lot of close situations. Like getting sniped, but you're behind cover, or reviving yourself while the other team is distracted. But a hidden use for the self revive is making it easier and faster for your teammates to get you back up. To do this, you can revive yourself close to the point of getting back up and have a teammate just revive you the rest of the way, making it quicker for them while also saving you your self revive. This will not waste it. Now, another thing I want to talk about is positioning. Being aware of where you are in relation to the circle and the gas is key to getting into later parts of the game. In the early game, your positioning doesn't matter as much because the first circle takes a little bit of time to come in, so this gives you plenty of time to get looted up and get over to the next circle. Mid to late game, being aware of your positioning can save your ass. Looking at your distance to the circle and where it lands is crucial. Pay attention to buildings and other landmarks like large hills and use these to get a height and circle advantage on other players while they try to escape the gas. Another tip I have for this is in late game, playing with your back against the gas makes it easier to be on the lookout for opposing players, while also eliminating the chance of getting killed from behind. This also gives you less angles that you need to watch. Vehicles are a very useful tool in Warzone. They one-shot down opponents just by running through them, so this can be a great way to take out an unsuspecting team. They do come with a few huge downsides. They can get blown up very easily so your entire team can get eliminated if you're all in the same vehicle. To counter this, as mentioned earlier, you can put a trophy system on all vehicles making them safe from almost every explosive. Another downside to using them is how visible they make you. Upon entering a vehicle, it'll show up red on the opposing player's maps while making a lot of noise, so try to avoid these in late game scenarios to stay incognito. Volts are huge in Warzone, they often give you multiple loot boxes even including a few legendary ones. These can be opened if you find an access key card by looting or grabbing it off a dead enemy. Here's a map with all the known bunker locations, but be careful if you try to enter one. There are people that will camp outside of them waiting for someone to show up with an access card to get some free loot. That's all the tips I have for improving your Warzone gameplay and usage of the items within the mode. If this helped you at all, or you learned something new, drop a like on the video. If not, dislike. Also, if you're feeling frisky, go give the sub button a little tap and hit the bell icon so you never miss an upload. If there's any topics you want to see me cover in a video, or another kind of video you want to see me make, leave your idea in the comments below, and who knows, it could be the next video. But for the real ones that watch all the way to the end of the video, leave a, Get him bro, he has no health, in the comments below. Peace.